welcome to my sewing room. I just love the show that we have for you today. We're going to do two things today. The first is picture transfer. And for those of you that love scrapbooking and memories and making memories and heirlooms and who doesn't, anybody that loves this show probably does. We're going to do the scrapbooking and the making memories on pillows. And we're also going to do silk ribbon by machine, which is really fun and easy to do. Let me share with you some of the samples of silk ribbon by machine first. These beautiful little ornaments, or you can use them for pictures on your wall. All of this is silk ribbon embroidery, but guess what? It's done the fast and easy way by machine. Now then, this scrapbooking that I like to do, this is absolutely one of my favorite pillows. It has silk ribbon by machine. It has some little purchased um, gizmos here, just some little flowers that look a little bit like Lily of the Valley. This little photo is from my antique valentine collection. And by the way, you can get antique valentines in almost any uh, antique store. And then you can do the method we're going to share with you today and have them put permanently on fabric. This is another one of the fit pictures from my antique valentine collection on a beautiful pillow that has a lace shaped heart and it has little embroidery floss woven up and down, up and down the machine entredeau. It also has some silk ribbon by machine up in the upper corner. Some more of the Valentines from my Valentine collection are used on this pillow, which has all kinds of goodies, including some little charms on it, a little girl with roses that she's dropping down, and then the little roses that she's dropped we have done in silk ribbon. You don't have to just put it on pillows. You can also put silk ribbon by machine on a picture. This is another one of my Valentines from my collection. It says a token of my love with the little, little child leaning over and just a tiny little bit of silk ribbon embroidery by machine. I have one more picture here to share with you, which is also very pretty. Another one of my antique Valentines. This time we framed it with a pretty suede frame. And this is a little girl waving and she has lots of silk ribbon by machine flowers surrounding her in a really pretty frame. And now won't you come along with me to the technique boards and I'll begin to share with you just how easy it is to do silk, excuse me, picture transfer and silk ribbon embroidery by machine. Picture transfer is so much fun. You start out first with a, you have to have some uh, transfer paper. Now this is a little antique valentine that we worked with on this project. You can see it has all kinds of little borders around it. Now Louise Baird scanned this into her computer and then she was able to expand it, make it larger, take away the border. So this is what she wanted from her computer. Now she still had to go to the photocopy place with her heirloom transfer paper to get a laser copy to do the transfer. Now you don't have to do just antique valentines just for fun i asked louise to bring this picture this shirt of louise and her four sisters that she has transferred onto a t-shirt so everything you do heirlooms are made today and you know uh speaking of louise baird she is my very special guest today louise welcome to the show <laughs> good afternoon martha um, what we're going to talk about today is to continue with the transfers and uh, here I have a transfer that's ready and um, I did have to take it to a photocopy place so that it can be placed on the transfer paper because you do need a laser copy um, of the uh, project for you to do. Now once you've got your copy onto the transfer paper then you need to iron it onto your base fabric. Uh, you need to use a, re a relatively hot iron and dry. After you heat it, then you peel the uh, backing away and you have a transfer onto your fabric. Okay. Okay. Now, to get the little design that we have around the, uh, the silk ribbon flowers, what I did was just make a photocopy of my picture, where I wanted it to be, and then on Salvi, I traced where I wanted my little silk flowers so that I'll know where to place them. Okay, and then I took my transfer, which I had, onto the fabric. I put my salvi on top, where, my know, where I know where to put my designs. And on the back of it, I do like to use a uh, permanent stabilizer so that it uh, supports all the stitches that you do when you are 
finished. Also, I like to use a temporary spray adhesive to kind of stick everything together oh, I like so that. that it doesn't shift <laughs> on you when I you're like placing it in a hoop. <laughs> okay, and when you place it in a hoop, you would have your transfer, and this is just a plain piece of fabric right now, but you would have your uh, fabric with the uh, stabilizer up underneath it and place it in a hoop. And here I have one that is ready to stitch. Now because these flowers are really pretty small, I'm not going to do it on these and instead I'll do it in a hoop where I can use some bigger ribbon or larger size ribbon so that the flowers are a little bit easier to see. Okay. Okay. You're show us how to do silk ribbon by machine. So how to do silk ribbon by machine. Now the first thing I do is use the invisible thread both in the needle and in the bobbin and set the machine up for free motion embroidery. And to do that, you lower your feed dogs and um, re always remember to put your foot down. I know a lot of machines are really smart today and they won't let you sew with your foot up. But <laughs> even if you don't have a foot on, you do need to remember to put your foot down. Now the first uh, stitch I'm going to do is a stem stitch, like underneath the flowers or the stems, and add um, some leaves with it. Now I'm using the seven millimeter ribbon so that it'll be more visible uh, for everybody to see, but you can really use any size uh, ribbon that will work. When, when I, I found that when you're doing the silk transfer, because the pictures are small, most of the ribbons that I use is a two millimeter instead of the real wide ribbon. Okay, now to do the stem stitch, the first thing I do is take my ribbon, place it behind my needle, and uh, hop over my ribbon, and then tack it down again. And that kind of gets me started. Now I'm going, since this is free motion, I need to move the hoop myself. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches forward and twist in front of the needle. And then take another couple of stitches, tack it down. And depending on how um, small you want that ribbon to be, or rather the stem to be, you can hold your stitches, the ribbon really tight. Like I'll do a couple of really tight uh, type stitches and it'll be a really narrow stem stitch here. So you can really adjust it according to how you want it to be. Fat or skinny. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now to do a flower, or rather a leaf, a lazy daisy leaf, I'm going to take my ribbon and pull it out of the way and stitch off to the side to where I want my leaf to be. Then I'm going to wrap my ribbon loosely around the back, take a stitch behind, and then one in forward and stitch back without stitching through the ribbon. And when I get back to the stem, I'll just cross it again in front of the needle, and I've got a lazy daisy stem, or a lazy daisy leaf here. Now to do a lazy daisy leaf with a French knot, what you can do is, again, just go off to the side, just like we did before, and this time, instead of just laying the ribbon behind it, uh, circle the needle a couple of times with your ribbon and lay it down behind. And I do like to use a skewer because you do want to be careful with your fingers. Here, I lift my needle up and then out back and then come back again, back to the center and cross in front of the needle. So again, you've got um, a lazy daisy and then one with a um, French knot on the end. The, um, these can be used not just for leaves, but for flowers also. And then one final little uh, thing I wanted to show is a, uh, just a loop flower. And I've still got my green ribbon, but I'll just go ahead and make little loops with a skewer, make a loop here, and tack it down. I'm going to turn it a little bit. And I like to put my, um, my skewer in the loop that I've already finished so that I can get them the same size. And, but you would keep going around and do as many loops as you want to do. Louise, that is just fascinating and just really easy too. Yes, it is. Louise, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, and now I have a really interesting craft for you. I want to share with you how we turned one of my $2 flea market valentines into something very elegant.
This is the photo transfer that Louise showed you just a few minutes ago with the flower stitched on it. And this is one of those mats that kind of looks like a green suede, which is really very pretty. Now you talk about easy to do. This is easy to put together. Here is my picture already finished. And now that's a little bit large to go in my frame, but let me show you what makes that really pretty, the puffy part. Take a couple of pieces of quilt batting, cut them about the uh, size of the oval. Then I've got to have a piece for the, to mount the whole thing on it. Actually, you can use a little bit of the spray, uh, spray adhesive too to glue it together if you want to. Okay, then I'm going to wrap it around, kind of center it, pull it over, take a little bit of tape. It doesn't have to be black tape, but that happens to be what I have. Fold it down and make it do it a little bit neater than I'm doing, but I'm going to have to hurry just a little bit. Anyway, fold it down and I'll have it on my board. Then I will come in and center it. And you see there, you just kind of push it and pull, and it kind of, and it just puffs out. Then I'll put another board in behind that. I have my frame. Over it goes into the frame, put the board behind and, uh-oh. I've got some fabric stuck in there, and you know you won't have that when you do it right. And that's absolutely all there is to mounting one of these pretty pictures. Let me pull the one that's mounted perfectly back over here. To using one of the antique valentines or a photo picture of, of somebody of your family or whatever you would like to do. This could be very sentimental if you'll use a family photo. And that's how easy it is to get one of these beautiful picture transfers with machine silk ribbon embroidery ready to go on your wall. And now I have a beautiful quilt square just for you. This is the most interesting quilt square. I'd like to share with you that this is done with Australian window pane bows around the edge, the blue bows. It has Australian window pane in the center and the technique right here in the circle is also Australian window pane. Now it looks as if there is lace in that circle and you can do it that way. But really this is so fun and interesting because that isn't lace, that's just a stitch in there which makes it appear like it is lace. So I'm gonna share with you both both ways of doing that beautiful quilt square and then you can take your pick just on whichever one you like the best. Okay, if you would like to just stitch lace in the center, you can simply trace off your template on your square, pin your laces, press it, and zigzag them down or you could use any of your wing needle entredeau stitches if you have those, but you simply zigzag it down and as you can see, you trim from behind. Now on this one, I have stitched it with a pin stitch and a wing needle, but any of those stitches will be just fine. Now, if you would like to do the Australian window pane, here is how that is done. First of all, you're gonna need a piece of organdy and then some salvy or water soluble stabilizer underneath it, all of that is put on top. The first step then is to tiny zigzag around the inside and the outside of the circle. Then you turn it over from, from the back. You see I've zigzagged the inside and the outside. I've also done that on the bows. Then in order to make it Australian window, first of all, then I gotta cut away all that organdy, then turn it over from the back and trim away all of the fabric on both the bow and on the circle, and that's what makes it Australian window pane. And then you come back and zigzag or do a pretty decorative stitch on top of that. Now that's Australian window pane. Let's just come in here and see how much fun it is to use a decorative stitch. And by the way, lots of machines, nearly every machine has a decorative stitch. I'm now going to decorative stitch. Remember I've got organdy and my water soluble stabilizer that's still in this area. And when I do a decorative stitch, and by the way, I'm using my open toe embroidery foot so I can see what I'm doing and where I'm going and I'm going to get my little shish kebab stick here to be sure it's all straightened out and you can use another layer of stabilizer if you want to but I believe this organdy and one layer of salve is going to be just about enough and I'm guiding as I go along I'm doing a decorative stitch in the middle you can see and this decorative stitch is going to make it look as if I have lace on this Australian window pane then after I do the decorative stitch, I will come back and do a final zigzag, or even I could even use a wing needle entredeau around the edge and make it look as if I have attached this, this machine made lace. And by the way, anytime you wanna make lace, if you don't have any lace, you can simply do one of these decorative stitches on organdy and it really does look for the world 
as if you had some lace. Now, isn't that a neat idea? This is called making your own lace with just a pretty little decorative stitch on your sewing machine and stitching on organdy. And now I have a beautiful project for you with some fine baby wear techniques. I'm so happy to welcome as my guest today, Claudia Newton. Thank Claudia you. is editorial director of the Fancy Works section of So Beautiful magazine. Claudia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Claudia will share with you some very, very fine perfection techniques for you to work with when you're doing beautiful baby wear, such as this lovely little jacket, which Claudia in Australia and England, they call these matinee jackets for babies. Claudia, I'm just gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. We're going to talk about tiny little French seams today. First, we're gonna do flat ones where both pieces of fabric are flat. Then we're going to join a gathered fabric to a flat fabric in our French seam. The thing to remember about a French seam is that it is sewn twice. The first time you sew it wrong sides together and then you flip that seam so that it's sewn right sides together. At that point, what you have to realize is that the first stitching has to be away from the original seam line. So what you want to do is to move out about the width of your finished seam. And in this case, we're gonna do tiny little eighth inch seams. So you can see my first stitch here has been done wrong sides together and I know that because I put little sticky dots on the right side of my fabric so that I always have a key there. Once I've straight stitched it, then I come back with a tiny little zigzag. The key to that is that it reinforces my tiny little seam and it gives me a straight area to trim against because what I'm going to do next is trim away the seam allowance here. Once I've done that, you can see that I'm still away from my original seam line. So what I do is fold it right sides together and then stitch it again so that I've got my straight stitch on the outside enclosing the first seam allowance. And I want to show you how I do that step. When we go to the machine, you remember that when you try to stitch a tiny little seam like that, it will tend to want to roll away from the needle. In order to stop that, I'm going to use my little skewer stick. And the way I use that is if I would put on a pin tuck foot and a five groove is what I generally use, that folded little seam allowance will ride right in the groove of my pin tuck foot. So what I can do is to start my stitching and it'll pick it up for you. And if you see that went through there nice and easy. At the far end, again, it'll try to whirl away from you. So you want to put that stick right up under the foot. And you can see, once I've done that, if I can get it out now, I've got a tiny little seam here. And what happens is that when I'm finished with that, I have little bitty French seams on the inside that are very, very narrow. Now you'll also notice that in the sleeve area, we have gathered seams. The way to do that is very, very similar to what we just did. Let me move this out of the way. Most of you have probably been taught that when you gather, you lengthen your stitch length and pull it up, and you get these types of gathers, which are nice, but they're a little bit bulky for baby wear. A trick that you can do is use your stitch length still on a two and a half or so and loosen the needle tension. That'll give you these tiny little baby gathers. Once we've done that, we do the same thing that we did before. We put wrong sides together. You're going to straight stitch first outside that seam allowance, zigzag it and trim it just like we did before. Once you've done that, you will turn it, this time right sides together. I'm going to put it back under the presser foot just like I did before with this edge running under the pin tuck groove and I'll stitch in about this area. I'm not going to show you that because it's just like what we did the first time. The next thing I want you to see is that once you've done that, we can then cross this seam when we put in our sleeve. So what I've got here is the finished seam on the inside. I turn it now with wrong sides together again. And I've already put the binding on this cuff. Sometimes you do that first and sometimes you can wait. It's up to whichever you choose to do. Again, I've done the same thing. I've straight stitched outside the seam allowance. I've zigzagged it and now I would trim it. The thing that you need to know about this is that when you cross that French seam, you've got bulk here, 
you've got bulk there and you're going to make another bulky turned seam. The way to make that work is to turn one seam down, the other seam turns up, and you match the stitching lines. When you do that, you get this nice, straight, tiny little French seam. Even though it's got that bulk in there, it's still a tiny seam. So let's look at the finished one. And you can see how small they are on the inside. When you finish it and you're using the right color thread, they come out very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very tiny and neat with your small gathers. Claudia, that is absolutely beautiful and it's just perfect. And you know, a lot of people really do enjoy getting their work perfect, especially right. baby clothes. Right. And there's nothing wrong with working on getting everything perfect, but it's all Correct. right to practice a little bit, yes. because for me anyway, it takes me a little while until I can <laughs> get it perfect. Well, you can't make delicate things without tiny seams. Yeah, so you and have you know, to Claudia, practice. most of my antique baby clothes do have the French seams yes. and both the shoulders. And the you know the side seams mm -hmm. and the shoulders, so I'm excited That's right. that you Good. share with Thank our you. viewers how to do that. Thank you. And next, won't you come along with me to my attic? Today, I have two antique pieces to share with you. This particular um, garment really isn't a garment at all, but it's the bottom of a petticoat, and it's so very unusual. I, by the way, I bought this in London. The reason it's so unusual is because it has colored embroidery on it. Now, to tell you the truth, this embroidery might have been added at a later date, but Regardless of that, I'm going to pretend like it was on it originally. This is the bottom of a petticoat. You see it has the uh, beading, the Swiss beading there, or ribbon slot, as they call it in England. And if you'll come down, look at this magnificent wide lace. Now, you talk about a lot of pretty lace that went on a petticoat. That is some pretty lace. But the little baskets are so very pretty. One of them is in pink, one of them is in blue, and it has lavender and green and yellow and blue and pink little flowers. And by the way, those little baskets and the embroidery books of a long time ago were called bridal baskets, where they had this little curved handle and then the little baskets and the flowers that went out to the side. The second little dress I would like to show, or the second garment I would like to show you today is really a beautiful little Swiss Batiste garment, and every bit of this embroidery is by hand. You see the wonderful um, uh, satin stitches and the little pinwheels that come down the front? and the little embroidered circles, and even the embroidery up in the bodice is by hand with the hem stitching. Look at the double, look, they're not double needle tucks, those are folded tucks, of course, there weren't any double needles back then. The little waistline has a band in the waist, and then coming down on the skirt, there are some really wonderful tucks. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven beautiful tucks, and you know what I like to think? I like to think that this might have been done for a seven-year-old little girl and possibly it was a first communion dress. I think it's really fun when you're doing things like tucks to do the number of tucks of the age of the child. Then on down on the little skirt is more hand embroidery and there's just a really sweet little patch here. There's a little square. In other words, there was a little hole in the dress. So some industrious mother or grandmother put a little piece of square batiste behind there and very, very carefully hand stitched it in. Now with today's modern sewing machines, you could do a little darning there, but you also just might want to hand stitch it in. The beautiful little embroidery on the bottom, the little scallops. I'll tell you what, that dress had a lot of hours and somebody really loved somebody a whole lot that made that dress. Just like a lot of our mothers and grandmothers today are sewing heirloom clothes for someone they love very, very much. I would like to thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a lot of fun and I certainly hope you have. And mainly, I'd like to invite you to come back next time. Music